Ever wondered what it might be like to attend a festival in the comfort of your own caravan? How about the world's largest Greenfields Festival? Well, we've just arrived at Worthy Farm for this year's Glastonbury 2023. Thousands of rock fans at the Glastonbury Six Festival Six hours of non-stop rain. This should give you a rough Glastonbury. idea of the festival so far. Not only is it our first time at the world-renowned event, it's our first time off-grid in the caravan. There's plenty to go wrong, but I think we've planned it well, so all should be good. So before we hit the festival, let's look at how we got to this point right now. Well, it's Monday evening and we are about ready to go. The plan is we're gonna drive down the M1, the M5, we're gonna come off at Michael's Wood Services. We're gonna park up there and we're gonna stay the night. You'd think we'd have the hang of this by now, but it still seems to test us. But before long, we were on the road. It was a smooth, surprisingly quiet journey with very little traffic. Just arrived at Michael Wood Services. It's half past 12, so we made it in good time, really. As you can see behind me, we're the only ones here. I thought there would be loads of people here. I thought it would be a bit uh, short for space, but no. So we'll get his head down and get back up in the morning, ready to do the last leg of the journey. Good night. Right, we need two brushes, don't we? Good morning. Well, we slept well. I slept very well, actually. So we're all set, ready to go. Just gonna brush his teeth, and then we can uh, head off to Glastonbury for the last leg. It's only about an hour and an hour and a half from here, so we'll get on the road. At the roundabout, take the second exit. Right, I've got a little quiz for you. It's a Glastonbury quiz. So there's a there's a fence that goes all the way around Glastonbury to try and prevent people from getting in. How many miles do you think that fence is? 100,000 miles? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 100,000 miles. <laughs> I think this is on lap. Ten miles. That wasn't bad actually, Jim, because it's eight miles. Oh, right, okay, not, not bad. There you go. I, I'd say that you did <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> well done, good effort. Thanks. So I'm guessing we follow this blue camping sign here. Uh, yeah, blue, they're blue. Does blue that, that says right. 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 Here we are, look, this is where all the traffic begins. Here we are. There is currently light traffic on your route. Oh, here we go oh then. God. This is us coming into a field. Good afternoon. Hi, are you alright? Yes, are you? Yeah, good, thank you. What do you need from us? Everything? Need that, just the blue ticket. Just the blue thank one. You. Brilliant, thank, thank you. you. Have a nice day. You too, have a great time. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, buddy. Blue. 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 <laughs> that way. Awesome. Cheers. It's blue. It's blue. It's blue. We've got a blue one. <laughs> Happiest people we've seen so far. Yeah. <laughs> Straight on, yeah? Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Cheers, buddy. I get you to come around here yeah. and do a turn. Yeah. So you're coming down, nose down, and we're parking just over here, okay? Yeah, so it'll put us awning on that side, yeah? yeah? On that side, and we'll give you enough space. Yeah, brilliant. So can you do it then? So, yeah. yeah, lovely. Let's carry on on that green post on this corner. Well, let's hope so. Love, just over here. Yeah. Gentlemen, I, I can, I, I'm driving the car as I need to. Right. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so we've arrived. We've made it safe and sound. We're on our pitch. So there you go. That's our pitch. We're going to get the caravan unpacked, get the rest of the stuff done, get us water sorted, get the toilet sorted. Yeah, no idea where the water is. Things have got to work out. All fun, isn't it? Splendid job. It's out in it. The awning's up, just pegging it down now. Looking good so far, it's absolutely roasting. I dare say it's 26, 27 degrees. It's about the first time that's ever actually come in handy. As you can see, there's three filling points and then you've got these taps down here. Washing your hands or just filling smaller containers, but once this one's about done, we don't want to come in that very often. That's number one, and two. So, you're all caught up. 
From this point, who knows what's in store? I honestly have no idea what to expect. There's an app that we've downloaded that tells us loads of information, but the only part we'll be using of that is the map. This place is huge. I think it's about to rain. What a great start. I'm ready for a beer. As well as giving you a tiny tease of the festival itself, it's my intention to give you some tips, things that could make your off-grid experience at Glastonbury more comfortable. Stick around long enough and I'll tell you the bleaker part of this experience. Now, when you arrive at Glastonbury, depending where you're camping or where you're parking, will determine what route or gate colour you'll follow. You can see there's multiple coloured gates and routes, so you need to know which one you're following. We were staying in Camper Vans East, so we came in on the blue route. From arriving at the first blue marker, right to pulling up on our pitch, the entire process was so smooth. It stopped a few times, including one stop of around 15 minutes, but on the whole, you are constantly moving. All right, slowly, but to think of the number of vehicles moving through the farm at once, it's pretty impressive. And when it comes to pitching up, I honestly thought we were gonna be packed in like sardines, but you can see how much space we had. Now that's probably down to the person parking us up, but none that I could see were overly tight. Right, so tip number one. It'll come as no surprise that the grounds of Worthy Farm are not flat. Therefore, be prepared for very uneven ground. Pack your levelling ramps. You'll need these for levelling out your van left to right. You'll also want some type of blocks for underneath your rear corner steadies or your jockey wheel or even both to level and steady your front and back. If you haven't got either of these, at least invest in a ramp because you'll certainly need this. When it comes to blocks, any square chunks of wood or bricks will do. I've got these Malenka stacker jackers, which you can build up to the height you need and then place them under your rear corner steadies. As for your jockey wheel, well, stacker jackers aren't ideal. I just took some lengths of wood to not only raise the front of the caravan because the jockey wheel wasn't long enough, but also to distribute the weight beneath the jockey wheel better. Malenko do make something, but I've never tried them, called a jockey pocket. I know, no idea. Well, it's Tuesday morning and Wednesday. Wednesday morning, good start. So today's the day it all begins. 200,000 very excited people descending on Worthy Farm. There's already a hell of a lot of people here in caravans, camper vans and motorhomes. But now the main gates are opening as Glastonbury 2023 officially kicks off. With over 100 stages, 100 bars, 400 food vendors and over 3,000 performers, it's time to go and explore. Just started to downpour. It's coming down quite decent now, isn't it? Thankfully, we're quick to react and get the ponchos on. So we've survived the rain. Lost the words a little bit when I was just about to talk about the sheer size of this place. At one point, I felt as though we were at the other side, and Gemma reminded me, "No, we're in the middle." You think, "Wow, it really is massive." the first issue and that is there's just too much choice when it comes to food it feels like there's thousands of vendors and to choose between them you just stand there looking at them all going I want everything oh, that was a good one. That's good, that is really good. Yeah. 
Good morning. Yesterday we spent pretty much all day just getting his bearings, walking around the festival and taking in the whole atmosphere. When it comes to the off-gridding experience, so there's been a few things that we've learned already. One is the battery situation. Now, the only thing that is actually running off our battery is the pump for the water in general, a little bit of electrics for the on the fridge, obviously on a night, some lighting. But other than that, we did have a fridge plugged in, a 12 volt fridge. The previous day, I looked at the solar panel and that was giving out 3.6 amp. The actual 12 volt fridge was also consuming 3.6 amp which means that we're not actually topping up the battery all we're actually doing is the solar panel was powering the fridge then coming in an evening and overnight it was then just taking more and more of that battery juice so decided to unplug the fridge and just use the gas fridge in the caravan check the gas the gas level is absolutely fine it's not gone down an awful lot we've cooked some breakfast on both days and obviously it's heating the hot water and using the fridge so all in all good so far really happy with the fact that we're self-sufficient in this caravan even just with that lead acid battery now we're going to go into the festival for day two we'll be back up here to meet jess and johnny and uh, welcome them into the caravan oh one more thing neighbors when i started caravanning i always envisaged that when you'd be on a site that everyone would talk to each other and everybody would be you know like they've known each other for years it's as big a part for me to play to to make that effort and do that with people and i think i do but this experience is an absolute eye-opener surrounding us now one two three four one's a trailer tent motorhome caravan and tents i have spoken to every single one of them we've had lengthy chats they come and talk to you how are you how was your day morning evening and i'm not used to that but that for me is what this is all about not just glastonbury being in a caravan being in your motorhome your camper van been out in the in the wilderness and just talking to strangers that you don't know and having conversations and i feel that this is how i imagine it would have been back in the day all the caravan rallies and whatnot and this is the first taste of what i really wanted it to be like and i'm really enjoying that just to say hi to everyone i can remember people's names you've got peter and nick clementines and dales I think I might be wrong on that one, but then we've got the gentleman lady behind us that I don't know their names yet. Jamie and Louise over here with their little girl. The fact that I even know their names, th that says everything. Maybe that's, you know, a lot of what Glastonbury is about, but that for me is what caravanning and being in that community should be about as well. Yeah, so that's all. Just thought I'd drop that one in there. Hey, up! <laughs> it was time to meet Jess and Johnny, and then let the weekend begin. You might be wondering why I'm sat in my back garden. Well, despite my best efforts to record a short vlog each morning at the festival, I basically just waffled and this video would be way too long. So I'm gonna round up the information and give you the less waffled version. What is worth noting, however, is the point in the week that I'd clearly been glastonized. Good morning, it's Thursday, day four. Good morning, it's day five. Morning, it's day six, the final day. I promise you, there were no drugs involved in this outfit choice. In my defence, it was 30 degrees that weekend and the t-shirts I had were all quite thick. So both me and Johnny opted for something a little thinner. Tip number two is an extra fridge freezer. Drinks can be expensive in Glastonbury and as much as you will buy a pint or two, you can save a lot of money drinking your own. Not only that, there's not much choice, especially if you like craft beer. So it's an idea to take an extra fridge to keep those drinks cool and even produce ice to put in your cool bag. However, if there's one thing I learned being off grid at Glastonbury, it was that you can't have a 12 volt fridge plugged in running 24 hours a day, mainly because the solar energy you generate isn't quite enough to keep your battery topped up and power your fridge. So my tip is to take a gas fridge freezer 
I know they're not cheap, but if you off-grid frequently, I reckon it would be worth it in the long run. I mean, I'm saying this, I don't own one, but if I went back, I'd get one, or borrow one, or rent one. Can you rent one? There's a thought. Oh, and for anyone running off lithium-ion batteries and a decent solar setup, ignore this one. Just doing a little bit more shopping. Oh, beautiful, Jess. <laughs> we'll buy more stuff. What are we buying now? So after everything I said about the girls shopping, it ended up being me and Johnny shopping. There you go, Johnny gives a twirl. <laughs> I think Johnny wins out of the shit shirt competition. There you go, Dimmer. After a few days at the festival, you're gonna have to replenish your fresh water and empty your grey waste water. So this next one isn't a tip, more of a heads up. Prepare you for being off grid on a farm. This is the bleak part. Well, it's that time again where we've got to refill the aqua rolls and get rid of the grey waste water. So I'll take you along for the experience. It's interesting to say the least. So as you can see, this is the scenario for filling your water up. See, the actual role of doing the job isn't any more different than it would be anywhere else. It's just the fact that it's compounded by it's so sludgy, which in all fairness, you can expect. This is had like five days of people running this water and it's, it's dry. There's not been no rain, but it's just in a very wet area, so. So if you're an experienced caravaner or motorhomer, you'll be well versed with an Elson point or chemical waste disposal point. You'd also be well aware of the difference between that and a grey waste disposal point. Well, when on Worthy Farm, forget that, because at Glastonbury, you empty your grey waste water into the same container as the toilet waste. Right, next job is this one here. Now, I'm not gonna get you too close because you don't need to see what's inside there, but that lid screws off there, as does that one. And you pour your waste in there, both toilet and grey water. Awful. The container's pretty big and raised about 40 centimetres off the ground, so it's a little awkward getting the grey water up. Oh, yeah, this is great. Doing it right, even hand lifting this up on here. Just be careful, splash back. By this point, people have given up replacing the lid, and to be fair, I was grateful I didn't have to unscrew it. It's full of floaters. One thing's for sure, the fact that it's used for both grey waste and toilet waste, there's no hint of the colour blue or green. That was the most unpleasant grey water experience of my life. <laughs> as bad as this is, I can assure you that sorting the toilet cassette was worse because your hands were even closer to the soup. Hey. When it comes to the toilet, I can give you a tip. What do you look like? Wear some gloves. Think splashback. I mean, that's not a bad shout, actually. In fact, if I were you, I'd wear an hazmat suit and a clothes peg. OK, you've gone too far now. It would be fair to say it's not a bad idea to wear a pair of wellies and a pair of disposable gloves when emptying either your toilet or grey waste water because you really don't want that splashback. I can't help but think that we were all doing it wrong and that each side of the container is meant to be used for each type of waste. But there isn't anything that would indicate this is how it's supposed to be used. So 
Who knows? If the long drops are anything to go by, it's probably just the Glastonbury way. But at least now, you know what to expect. And the final tip, you want as fewer trips as possible to empty your grey waste and refill your fresh water supply. Not only because it's no fun, but you've no idea how far a walk it's going to be to replenish. So take two of each. If you don't have two, borrow them from someone if you can. If you can't, well, it's not the end of the world, but I'm glad we did. I mean, what an event. The food, our drinks, the people, the music, the acts, the toilets. Oh, speaking of which, I haven't mentioned the portaloos on the camping field were actually okay, surprisingly. The toilets in the festival, well, they are what they are. The different areas of the festival and the effort that goes into each is just fantastic. But this really wasn't just about the festival for me. It was about experiencing being off-grid in the van, something that neither of us had ever done. And having the world's best festival on your doorstep was a bonus, obviously. Oh my goodness, it was incredible. <laughs> other than learning you can't run a 12 volt fridge off a lead acid battery, we had no other power issues. And as for gas, we used roughly two liters. It's nothing. Obviously, we hardly use the caravan. Don't go off-grid for six days, assuming you'll only use two liters of gas. <laughs> What I've learned is there's something about being off grid that excites me. A bit like the first time you drive your car after passing your driving test, you feel incredibly independent. The realization that you really can be in the middle of a field in your home from home and you don't need to be restrained to the confines of a 16 amp supply or a nice toilet and shower block nearby. You've got a lovely one right there in your caravan. It's freeing. And I've been doing it for not just two or three nights, but seven. I'm ready for more. So. Is Glastonbury Festival really what it's made out to be? Is it really such an incredible experience that I recommend you try your best to get tickets to? Do you know what? I wouldn't bother if I were you. It's incredibly busy. It's incredibly stressful getting tickets. And I genuinely think you just won't enjoy it. But for those that are going, I hope this was of some help. I look forward to seeing you soon. Gemma! We need every laptop, MacBook, iPad, iPhone, bring Jess and Johnny. Tickets for Glastonbury going on sale in 10 minutes. Yeah.